Hey, audience, if you want to support the show and receive 15% off sweet spooky swag, then click the link in the description below and use my code STORYTIME. Hi, audience. Welcome to Stories with Sapphire. I'm your Ate Sapphire. When my grandpa was about 25 years old, the tree outside his home in the Philippines was always swarming with bats. And the bats are eating the So he went out with his gun to see if he could scare them away. He fired one shot, but the bats seemed unfazed. He fired another. Still, nothing. But then there was a cuss, cuss. That's when the bats flew away. My grandpa believes that the sound was coming from an aswang. And like the bats, he got the hell out of there. An aswang is one of the most feared creatures in the Philippines. This is my interpretation of one of the most popular legends surrounding them. And now, it's story time. Decades ago, a woman named Maria lived in Capiz, a province in the Visayan region of the Philippines. She lived there with her husband, Jose, and their two children. Maria had just lost her job, and her husband couldn't support the family on his policeman's salary alone. So Maria made the decision to find work overseas and send money back home. It was a difficult decision to make, one that many Filipinos have made, but Jose assured her that it would be best for the family. We will talk every week, and he won't be gone forever, just until I get a higher paying job or until you can find work again. We can do this. And so Maria moved to Canada and found a job as a caregiver to an eccentric and very wealthy elderly man named Harry. Maria had been a caregiver to many people before, but this man was definitely interesting. He requested that after sundown, Maria lock his bedroom and not enter until the sun rises the next morning. He handed her a set of keys, one key for each of the six locks on the door. Maria thought his need for privacy was a bit excessive. But what if you need me in the middle of the night? I won't. Are you some sort of vampire? Come now, Maria. Vampires aren't real. After the old man had been locked away, Maria called her family. Because international phone calls were very expensive, Maria limited herself to one conversation with her family per week. She told Jose about the old man's strange request. It worries me. What if something happens to him while he's locked up and I can't get in? Maybe he's just a light sleeper and doesn't like being disturbed. What do you think the police will do if they see that he died in a room that I sealed? They will arrest me. I don't know if this is a good idea. You'll be fine. He's paying almost three times what others would. We need this, Maria. So Maria carried on. She assisted Harry in the bathroom. She prepared his meals and medication and even played card games with him. And although he was very old and frail, his mind was bright and alert. Harry told Maria stories about his three kids. One was a doctor, another a lawyer, and one a teacher. When he spoke of them, his face lit up, as only a proud father would. How often do you see them? Oh, my, I don't even think I can recall the last time I saw them in person. They do not visit you? That's terrible, Maria exclaimed, a heaviness forming in her chest. But Harry seemed completely unbothered. They have their own lives. That night, when Maria called her husband, she told him about what Harry said, about not having seen his kids in years. I've only been away from you and the kids for a few months. I can't imagine what not seeing you for years would feel like. He acted like it was normal. I feel so sorry for him. You don't know what their relationship is like. I'm sure there is pain that he's not showing you. It was rather curious. Why hadn't his children visited him in so long? 
Perhaps they had a falling out of some kind? But what kind of fight would lead to abandoning your elderly father? Forever. Harry seemed like such a kind and gentle man. A little weird, sure, but he was agreeable. She wondered, what if it had something to do with him locking himself up at night? Maria's curiosity was piqued. She had to know. That night, Maria helped Harry into bed like every other night. But when she closed the door, she didn't fully close all the locks. She waited a few hours to make sure he was asleep before carefully removing the locks one by one. She took a deep breath. She slowly turned the doorknob and gently pushed the door open inch by inch. The light from the hallway seeped into the room, piercing the darkness. The light fell upon the bed, the empty bed. Harry was gone. Maria reflexively turned the bedroom light on. Harry wasn't in his bed. She began to panic. She felt around the covers, under the bed. That's when she heard a soft breath coming from behind her. She carefully turned around. Standing in front of her was a six foot, slimy skinned humanoid creature. It towered over her, its hot breath falling onto her face. The creature lifted an arm and motioned with its long bony finger for Maria to come closer. Unsure if following its orders was better than not following it, Maria settled on the former. Step by step, she moved closer to the being. It unhinged its jaw and opened wide. Back in Capis, Jose was on his way home from a long shift. When he opened the door, he was confused as to why the door was already unlocked. A delicious aroma hit his nose from the kitchen. He followed the smell to find Maria cooking dinner. He was so happy to see her, he rushed over to embrace her. He was surprised by how much bonier she felt in his arms. She excitedly told him that dinner was almost ready and motioned for him to take a seat at the table. Jose took a seat and stared at the woman at the stove. Is everything okay, dear? I'm just tired and hungry from my trip. She pulled a large tray out of the oven and hastily placed it on the table. Let's eat! Maria sat down and began shoveling food onto her plate. Jose called out for the kids to come join them, but there was no response. He turned to Maria and asked her where the kids were. Her mouth was so full of meat that it muffled her response. Um, what, what did you say, dear? Maria swallowed and raised the bone she was holding and gestured to the tray. They're right here. Jose froze. Maria said nothing. Jose pulled out his bolo knife and slashed Maria's face, leaving a long gash from her brow to her cheek. She shrieked in pain, get out of here and never come back, you monster. Maria ran out the door. It is said that Maria still roams the town of Capis at night. So beware of any women with a slash across your face. You might become her next meal. In Filipino folklore, there are many ways one can become an aswang. In this particular story, Harry was an aswang and transferred his curse to Maria by opening his mouth and letting the black chick inside him hop out of his stomach and into hers. In passing his power along, Harry also lost his immortality and passed away shortly after. The story of Maria Labo resonates with Filipinos because it's a fear many have. It's common for Filipinos to move to another country to provide for their family. This means not being able to see their family for months or years. In some cases, they never see them again. Being away for so long is stressful. You don't know if they're going to return, or if they do, if they'll return as the same person you once knew. What would you do if someone you loved suddenly became a monster? If 
you don't want nightmares tonight, like and share this story and subscribe to my channel. Submit your own stories to storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. For more spooky, supernatural, and spiritual stories, listen to the Stories with Sapphire podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. If you like what you saw and would like to support this independently run show, head over to patreon.com slash storieswithsapphire. Until we meet again, sleep tight.